it's like a personal thing. And I think uh, cortisol levels will probably rise initially with carbohydrate restriction, especially ketogenic, but I think they will normalize through keto adaptation when you have the physiological metabolic adaptation. So a lot of people will talk about feeling good fasted uh, and then critics of fasting uh, and, and even ketosis will say, well, doesn't that elevate cortisol, which, which can be good and can be bad. And obviously chronically elevated cortisol all the time isn't, isn't great from what I understand, but mm -hmm. what are the sort of, and I appreciate this is, this is a complex probably issue that, that's multifactorial, but what, what are the sort of interactions there with, with cortisol? And is it a sort of, negative as, as people would would make it out to be and say oh you can't fast because you you know you'll skyrocket cortisol and you'll cause yourself all these problems yeah uh you know what i mean just before i got i jumped on here i was pulling some of my blood work because i have to give a talk uh in europe uh this weekend and i was just thinking about you know showing some personal data uh and i was looking actually through my cortisol measurements and my, my cortisol is consistently low on the low end of normal to normal. Uh, although in particular situations like the NASA Nemo mission, it was spiked, you know, uh, through but that you were was under more of a psychological. Yeah. yeah. But I guess the point is that physiologically, I was doing intermittent fasting and ketosis, and I was looking through my cortisol measurements. And for me, it was normal, but I do think, I mean, getting to the root of this question, if you're following a high carb diet and then you rapidly transition into ketosis, uh, I don't have data to when I did the transition. So my cortisol may have been elevated over time, but then I don't like the term new normal, but I think, you know, once you are keto adapted, then that becomes the new normal for you. And yep. then your cortisol and everything, your homeostatic mechanisms come into play. And I think for me, once my body became adjusted to basically functioning on lower levels of insulin and lower glycemic variability, I think my cortisol actually got normalized in a way that stayed uh, the baseline level was lower because I had measured it years ago when I was not on a ketogenic diet. And, you know, it was like high end of normal. And then I measured it a lot for, we were vetting out different labs because we wanted to choose the right lab uh, for the research. So I ended up doing like dozens of cortisol measurements for different different labs and different, different things. And then, you know, just come to realize I just have a, like a lower state of cortisol. Uh, it, it's high in the morning as it should be, and then tapers off. Yeah. You know, I have the nice, yeah. nice cortisol response. But, uh, but I think the point is that people will argue this and it, I mean, I get, I get these emails a lot. It's, it, this has, this conversation inspired me. I'm going to do a post today oh, <laughs> on great. Instagram. You had mentioned, you know, that, uh, here's my cortisol measurements. And, and because I get a lot of, a lot of questions, a lot of emails about this. So it is, and it can be an important topic for some people who, uh, my wife tends to have high levels of cortisol, but she does not follow a ketogenic diet. <laughs> so this right. is something that she's trying to get a handle on, but the rest of it, her blood work looks remarkably great. And she eats relatively higher sugar, higher carb, you know, to me, pretty standard, like, you know, American macronutrients, but she just does well off higher carbs. Uh, but her cortisol trends really high. Her baseline cortisol does, but everything else looks really good. Uh, so I think it's a very, my point is it's, it's like a personal thing. And I think uh, cortisol levels will probably rise initially with carbohydrate restriction, especially ketogenic, but I think they will normalize through keto adaptation when you have the physiological metabolic adaptation. And I mean, that, that makes, yeah, that kind of intuitively makes sense. So, and again, yeah. I don't want to kind of uh, put, put words in your mouth, but potentially i mean any kind of dramatic change will increase cortisol right so yeah would there yeah. be an argument for like tapering to say you're on 400 grams of carbs taper down to like 100 and then to 50 and then or you know whatever if you tapered it you might mitigate that yeah and you know a rise in cortisol is a favorable adaptation the problem with cortisol is chronically elevated cortisol that continues to stay elevated in the latter part of the day. Yeah. Like, so if you do like, you know, we would measure cortisol four times and if it's elevated like at eight o'clock at night, that's not good. So you want to see the nice spike in at, in the morning yeah. and that quick high elevation of cortisol in the morning is very favorable and yeah. you want that. 
you know, that gets your body, that Absolutely. sets you up yeah. nicely for the rest of the day. Uh, yeah. So yeah, to get, you need to like measure it at different time points, salivary, I've done saliva and also blood. And I kind of like saliva. I got some of my best data, I think on saliva and I've compared it to blood. It's pretty comparable, but, uh, but a simple saliva cortisol kit doing that a couple of times will give you a handle on yeah. that. And, and then there are supplements that you can use too. Uh, if you tend to just be a high cortisol uh, <laughs> producer, uh, because yeah, I've communicated with a lot of people over the years where this this has been a problem for them, uh, but it's usually females. I've never really had a male uh, where it was a problem that it didn't self-correct itself. Is, it's is there some kind of, I mean, again, I, I'm asking you to speculate here when you may not have yeah. data, but something relating to testosterone, you know where I'm going with like testosterone yeah. versus estrogen type dominance there or i i don't know i mean it, yeah well i mean I, I mentioned my wife you know tends to have higher cortisol and she's on a more of a carbohydrate based diet uh but i've communicated with a lot of females that have high cortisol and i my thoughts on that is that the female physiology is kind of hyper reactive to uh carbohydrate restriction in a way where they will overproduce cortisol to make up for it. And they may not have the robust ketone metabolism or fat metabolism that males have. Uh, not always the case, but it just seems that it's it's more of the case that there's uh, unfavorable metabolic and hormonal changes in females, at least on paper, yeah. that, especially during the initial uh, you know shift to ketosis which, in yeah, some which, females. May or may not fade over time. Yeah. I guess. yeah, and then I mean, in some blood work in female, I think it's beautiful. I mean, it's low cortisol. It's corrected their hormones, uh, especially if they have polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS, and then it's been remarkably favorable in every way. Uh, but and then again, some some females. So that's why you really do have to test. I'm a big advocate for knowing what your baseline is, and then if, if you make changes to your diet or training or supplements or whatever to be able to monitor those changes longitudinally yeah. over time. Yeah, it's super important. A lot of people don't do that. I mean, it's, it's obvious, but a lot of people don't do that.